Hello and welcome to the Rusty Beard. Today we're going to talk about some important tools whether you're out camping or you're a homeowner that's uh, out in the country like myself. Uh, a knife is a very important thing to have but your second primary tool is your axe. Now today we're going to re be replacing this axe handle because it's all jacked up as you can see. It's all been chewed up, beat up over the years. It's still a good head. So it's just cheaper to replace it than to buy a new. So the first thing you uh, got to do is get yourself the appropriate handle. I try to find one with nice grain. This was the only one left on the shelf, so I had really not much choice. It's fairly straight. It's just got the tiniest little bit of wow in it. Tiny bit. You don't want too much because that'll throw you off on your axe throwing. So the first thing we got to do, oh, back up. You got to get the appropriate size, not just the length, but the, for the size of your head. And that's on the pictures at the beginning of the video. I uh, show you with measuring tape what this is and then the label that I took off that. Uh, that they compare and they will fit. So first thing we got to do is get this head off of here. Uh, for me, it's going to be just easier to just cut this rest of this handle off so I have less to work with when I'm pounding it out. So we're going to do that first. We're going to plug it in here, a tool. Obviously, use proper safety procedures when using power equipment. So, however, I'm not. I'm not going to use earplugs. You probably should. Now that the handle and the head have been separated to some degree, now we got to get the rest of the way out of there. Now there's a piece of steel in there, a steel wedge that expands to hold the handle into the head. So that's going to create a bit of a uh, resistance. Any sort of punch to drive it out should work. It's been a while since I've had to do this, so I'm just trying to figure it out as we go. So now we got the axe head and the axe handle separated from each other. Right now would be a good time to sharpen it if it needed. This actually is not a not a bad blade. It's not too beat up. So we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to concentrate on getting this here handle in there. Now I dropped my wedge. So I had to retrieve it here. The handle comes in three or four parts, depending on the handle you buy. So make sure you put it on correctly. There is a teardrop effect on both the head and the handle but also the end of the handle that's your swell to keep it from sliding out of your hand you want that facing forward now when I say there's uh, multiple parts you got the handle itself you got this wedge that goes in there that's going to swell this up to fit tightly in the head and then to keep that in there you got a wedge or two and you put that in at a diagonal, pound that in, which locks in all the pieces together. So first we got to do is get the handle on. So we are going to start tapping away. Once we get it started, the rest you can let gravity work for you. 
You just slightly step, tap it. Usually that does the trick, but this one's be a little more difficult. So we're gonna have to just pound her on there. A block of wood will help from de uh, deforming the head there where it pokes through the handle, which can then create a bit of a rough edge that'll slow you down. Well, sometimes you have to trim a little off. This is excessive. Apparently, the handle that I bought is on the extreme edge. It says two and seven sixteenths. When I measured this, this is two and seven sixteenths. Uh, but the, it goes from two and seven sixteenths up to two and thirteen sixteenths. So my maximum is this one's minimum. So it's a really tight fit, which is all right. You want a tight fit on an axe handle. A little tighter than I was hoping for. Oh boy, this is slow going. This is going to be a little longer video than I was expecting to do. Alright, we're starting to get a bit of uh, excess pressure built up. So we're going to cut some of that off. See if that uh, speeds us up a little bit. It's still obviously going to struggle getting in there, but less resistance we have in the way, the better. Now, normally, I don't sweat like this, but I stoked the fire up really good in the shop here. Uh, to the point now, it's too warm. So, I'm going to... So... Back at it. Might have to do a bit of editing here. This is turning into a bit of a chore. So, uh, you can see I got it down in there a little further. I took a little break, cooled off a little bit, cooled the, the shop out. Uh, but I was piling up down here, and so I trimmed all that material that was coming back. If it's too tight, you stop. You pound it back off and you sand your axe handle a little bit to make it a better fit if it's too tight. Uh, this one is tight, but I got a little bit left to go, so I'm going to try to continue going a little bit more. I'm going to call that done. Now, now it's time for the wedge. You get your wedge. Now, the other one had a traditional... Uh, steel wedge in there full length the newer version I've noticed the last couple I've had to do you got a wood wedge followed up by your steel wedge so now this one's already going to be a little too big so we're going to trim it down a little bit It's handy that I happen to have an axe right here. There we go. That'll fit now. It was uh, it was so wide, it was extreme edge to extreme edge, which was going to end up being a problem. So we trimmed it back a little bit. Now this is pretty tight. Hopefully this wedge will make it in there. If not, uh, it's going to split up real bad. Be a mess. Or uh, we'll have to Thinks she's as tight as she's gonna get. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim that whole apparatus off. Some people, especially on hatchets, leave them a little long. That's unclean. You hit that when you're coming through the wood, and it can start splitting up your uh, handle, and it'll add drag. So we're gonna trim that off with that same handsaw that I was failing. Add earlier. So, 
what I'm going to do instead is get a grinder. I'm just going to flush it up with a grinder, look, make it look real nice. But we're almost there. So I'm going to pause the action and come right back to you. And we're back to it. We have our trusty grinder here. Good enough. She's flush. That wasn't the best wheel to use, but it worked. I just was in a hurry and didn't want to swap it out. So, so we got our wedge in there. We got our axe handle in there. There's two more steps to complete. Uh, this is number one of two to complete. So now we get our steel wedge. And we're going to go at a diagonal. Not cross, not with it, but about a diagonal. Sometimes they give you two of these and you'll put two of them in there, one bigger one. And so here we go. Make sure it's seated pretty flush with the rest of it, which it now is. Now, I said there was two steps. You're thinking, oh, we're done, which we are. I can start chopping wood with it. Now, I'm going to clean this up. I got a little bit of fray going on down there. It looks messy, and I don't like it. But for the most part, she's complete. Now, some people soak their axe head and handle in a bucket of water. And what that does is that swells it up and finishes that tightening process, make sure she don't come loose on you. Now, the problem with that is water dries out and then you're back to the same old problem. The proper way to do it is to use boiled linseed oil. The difference between boiled and unboiled or raw linseed oil is not a boiling process. They add additives to the linseed oil to help it uh, dry quicker. Regular linseed oil can take days, weeks to dry. Boiled linseed oil, 24 hours. So, I don't know the price, the current price of linseed oil, uh, but you buy it, you pour it in a little appropriate sized bucket, and you drop this axe head in there, and it's gonna spill in here, and it's gonna penetrate the wood. You leave it in there for a good couple of days, let it soak in. The rest of the linseed oil, you can wipe down on the handle, as, see, now it comes with this protective finish on it from the factory. That's going to wear off, especially uh, if you leave it out in the elements, even under a drip edge of a building where it's not getting wet, it's exposed to the sun, and that'll get dry and flake off over time. That's when the oil helps uh, protect that wood, keep it from getting splintery and dry and hurting your hands. The tools shouldn't hurt you. So, there we are, folks. Uh, school is done. Hopefully you took notes, some mental notes. Uh, but yeah, the reason why an axe is important, a chainsaw where I live out here in the woods is really important, but chainsaws can fail. Your uh, chain can get dull. You can run out of fuel. Uh, you can break down. Carburetor, get gummed up something. A good old trusty axe will get you there. It, uh, it's really hard to fail unless you break the handle, but we know how to replace the handle now. So tips from the rusty beard. On uh, good maintenance of an axe. And hopefully there'll be more. Have a happy new year.